and you compare it to this again, $99 Fuego, $99 SLX. Look at this, look at the size difference. Look how much smaller the new Shimano is. Now for the big reveal. Oh, sh you know what, guys? I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, this is metallic blue. Cast King. <laughs> this is metallic blue. <laughs> I think these bushings have tighter tolerance tolerances than the Concept Z. It really does look that way. And trust me, guys, I have so much close-up footage of the bushings on those Concept Zs. Yeah, this is much tighter tolerance. Which probably is why I'll check it when I get it back together, but um, I don't think there was any handling that got rock. So yeah, guys, this is this is this is looking good. I, I, I like what I see. A lot of times people think that Daiwa, Shimano, high end, they make the good stuff, but they just phone it in for the cheap stuff. Um, and five years ago, I would agree with you. To be perfectly honest with you, they you know they just basically said, "All right, lose, go ahead, take over. You got us. We're not even gonna try." Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today we'll be unboxing, tearing down, and doing our customary overview of a brand spanking new wallet-friendly baitcaster from Shimano, the brand new SLX. Now, before we get started, I just want to say thank you very much to Josh over at JNH Tackle who submitted this reel. I knew it was coming down the pipe. I asked him yesterday if he could send one on over, and boom, priority one day mail. It came, it's Saturday, next day. And we're now going to crack this box open. And <laughs> not metallic blue. <laughs> That's a cast king goof, if you guys didn't see. Oy vey. All right, so, did I miss the slot? There we go. And very well packed. And no, that's not metallic blue either. Hashtag Cast King Royal Legend Elite. All right, so we have tape seal still there. Guys, I'm curious. Just to let you know, my expectations of this reel are insert your favorite model of green Corrado here. This is what I hope Shimano's coming out with at $99. I know there's some controversy over what Corrado or what green Corrado was the world's favorite, but oh, that's a nice little schematic. Cool, cool, cool. No X ship, which tells me that it's a similar design to what you would find in the old Corrado. I think the new Tranxes don't have X ship either, which is that dual pinion supported bearing. And we have the mystery oil. Looks a little yellower than normal, maybe even a little thinner. I don't know. You tell me. And that's pretty much it. So you have the schematics, and we're not even gonna look at this stuff. <laughs> There's never anything useful in Shimano literature. It's bubble wrapped. Oh wow, she's tiny. Wow, okay, okay. Very, very slim. I wasn't expecting it to be this compact. I want to set the tension knob to where I prefer it. You know, it has that nice high pitch whir that a lot of the, the higher end Shimano's have out of the box. Big cushy knobs like you would find in the Corrado K and look. This, okay. So there's a little bit of consistency issue, and at $99, yeah. But it's still, it's okay. You have the knob that has a little tiny bit of play here. Uh, no lean at all. And this one's nothing. Like you would find on a $600 reel. Look at this, no play at all, no in and out. So we'll, we'll give this part of the reel, we'll give this an eight out of 10. I don't like giving number ratings, but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea how it stacks up. So it's it's almost on the level of what you have on uh, a Metanium DC and a Terra's, uh, where it's almost perfect. So you know, let's not focus on that too long. Too long. Oh, and it has your little, you know, 
retaining uh, spring here and this bar so you don't lose your side plates because that's apparently an issue. And you have an interesting brake design. So I was expecting to see that VBS brake from yesteryear. We just had the pins like on the Tranks 500, the Tranks 300, 400, the old Corrados. But it actually has a static centrifugal brake found in the Corrado. Very interesting with what is this, six pins? So you have tons of, of range. That's, that's pretty cool. I, you know, I, again, I'm not the biggest Shimano baitcaster guy. I love their spinning reels. So I don't have any experience with a, a six, I'm calling pins, uh, uh, SVS Infinity <laughs> static brake. That's decent free spool. Out of the box, that's that's actually really good free spool. And we're gonna go ahead and clip the mic to the reel, just to give you an idea how, how it feels on my end. And again, I used this method on another video, and I think I'm gonna to continue to do it, and I, I'm willing to bet there's gonna be a lot of guys out there that are gonna start doing this, because it really is an effective way of doing it. Now you guys heard that Cast King Royal Legend. That's, I can't hear a thing, just so you guys know. You know what? Let me go ahead and clip the mic here. Hopefully this doesn't make you go deaf. I'm going to turn the mic down a little bit because, again, I can't tell what it sounds like until I look at it in the video editor. And we'll do the same thing that we did on the other cast, okay? We'll clip it to the handle. I think this is... Okay, I might. I mean, they're very smooth. Like butter. They don't spin forever. And again, ball bearings and handle knobs aren't needed unless they're there to make up for the side-to-side -side play. Sometimes when you have bushings and handle knobs, you can't get the shimming right without locking up and binding. These are, are really nice. Like you're like, I, guys, if you have a $500 reel and you're turning the handle. You know, I guess this reel is now $500 US. You know, I really can't. You know, they spin like this, whoop de doo I, I, I can't tell the difference between these two reels and the handle knobs. Sorry if you guys are upset about that. <laughs> So this is an interesting reel. This is the first time that I've uh, I've liked the fit, finish, and feel of a ninety-nine dollar Shimano baitcaster. This is uh, this is new. Well, how much were the old Corrados, the green ones? They were nice. They weren't my favorites, but um, I'm I'm digging it. So when you have something like this, which is the ninety-nine dollar Fuego. All things considered, when you compare it to this again, $99 Fuego, $99 SLX. Look at this, look at the size difference. Look how much smaller the new Shimano is. From front to back, it's probably I'd say six millimeters shorter from the chin to the back. It's much slimmer. It's it's probably on along the lines of those. Uh, those new um, OEM looking Daiwa reels, the CG80 and the whatever they are. Very compact. I mean, we're talking very, here, here's a oldie but goodie. Here's a, a, a beaten to crap Abu MGX. It's almost the size of this, which is a tiny little reel. Not quite as small as the current uh, MGXs, but it's, it's down there. I like it. I, I like the fit and finish of this reel. I can't wait to see how this thing fishes. This is a really nice reel, guys. Again, out of the box, is it a turd? I can't tell. It just feels good. I mean, in hand, I like everything about it. And this is what separates the uh, the men from the boys. When you look at the distance between the outer flange of the spool and that level wind, that's kind of what made the Fuego CT one of my favorite reels for the price. 
And it really looks like the Shimano is right up there as far as distance. It's pushed way out, much further than what you get out of the uh, Bantam MGL. And the further out you move that le level wind, uh, essentially it, it acts and responds uh, like a non-level wind reel. So if you guys are on the beach surf casting, you want maximum difference, uh, difference distance, you don't want a level wind because this here, this little eyelet here, will impede the line, the flow of the line coming off the reel because as it switches directions, it's got to go here, it's got to go here and hit that level wind. Nice, nice, nice. I can't, can't find anything wrong with that. And uh, looking here, it's black. I'm willing to bet that it's a plastic worm gear, which, guys, who have the crowd okays? You break your worm gears yet? I bet you didn't. Let's get a weight. I'm going to go from ounces. I think on the package they say 6.8. I think that's what it is. That's that's pretty sweet. Again, 99 bucks. Okay, we're looking half ounce. Uh, yeah, about a half ounce, roughly. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to get a spool weight for you finesse guys out there. Come on. This is where it makes me look stupid. Fifteen with no bearing. Okay. That's a pretty big break. What's going on over here? What going on there? Fifteen point five. Give me a moment to get this side plate off. And again. This has been my pick for the best $99 reel. This is a brand new reel I just got in the mail. I had one made about, I don't know, 2,000 casts worth. That's how much time I put on it. And it was a great reel. And I figured, you know what? It, since I keep on recommending it, I, I got to at least have one. And I think it was one my camera broke. And I had to send it out to Sony that I couldn't really do anything with it. So I just figured I'd sell it off. So 17.13 versus... 15 and a half. So slight difference. And again, they're very similar in design as far as you have that, that long shaft that runs the entire width of the reel. It's not like you'll find on some of the free fleet free floating designs in Abu. Uh, it's not like a free floating design that you'll find in some of the higher end Daiwas. So there's a little bit of extra mass that it's got to get going, but it's inward. So it's a little bit easier to get it going. So it's not the end of the world. It all comes down to the break now as far as how it's going to handle finesse lures. And again, are you guys buying this reel for finesse? Or are you just guys trying to get a, a good uh, stack of reels on your boat deck? Sweet. All right, so enough uh, jibber-jabbering. Let's go ahead and see what's up her skirt. Is that appropriate to say? I'm going to edit that out. So that's enough jibber-jabber, and let's uh, get inside. I'm curious. Hmm. That was a 10 mil. It seemed a little looser than normal. Interesting. I love these caps here. I, I really do. I, I, I despise what Daiwa uses on some of their reels. Because if you look... Actually, no. This one's not bad. Sorry. This one's good. But on some of the higher-end ones, it just have that silly little... Aluminum little ring. You know, you're gonna scratch these things no matter what wrench you use, whether the fancy aluminum ones you get off a hedgehog or what. All right, so we have the click plate here, which runs along in here. I love this design, very similar to the orange bandit, the orange crush, the Concept Z, only it's improved. It really is. We covered that in the Bantam MGL review. And since we're trying to focus on way too many things at once. You can see what makes up this. So just make sure you're careful. Oh, that just fell down my little ledge there. It didn't go anywhere. But there's a little, little detent that runs in that spring. And a little plunger that goes in there. Great design. I like it much better than the older 
Metanium DC, to be honest. When it comes to servicing, this is bash of Stella with the Metanium. God. <laughs> I have way too many fishing reels. First war problems. And looks like we're going to have to pay, pop that spool out again. Ah, I didn't. <laughs> oh well. You can see it's a plastic side plate. It definitely felt like a plastic side plate, so it's expected. For you guys that work on your own reels for the first time. I usually like holding the reel and whatever orientation the screws come out, just so I know where they go. So that's the back, that's the front. You can see two different sizes. Uh, and a little context clue to let you know if you, what screws go into metal, what screws goes in, into plastic. You see these coarse threads. Those coarse threads are going to be going into the plastic. The finer ones always go into metal. Just a little thing. You hear that crack? That's a broken fishing reel right there. That's that's this Loctite usually. Oh, no. How's this breaking her loose? Sometimes when you have screws going into a plastic body, it compresses a little bit and almost acts like a, a lock. And you can tell what is what. Again. You have your coarse versus fine screws. I think that was it. Now for the big reveal. Oh, sh you know what, guys? I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, this is metallic blue. Cast king. <laughs> this is metallic blue. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. I was playing around with some uh, pre-release Shimano surf rods a couple years ago, and this color was all over them. All right, that's a pretty large main gear. Let's see if we can get this out like so. Get that out like so. Oh wow! I didn't see this in the schematic. Sorry about that, guys. I was flat out dead wrong. That Lara is an X ship ball bearing. That is, well, that's what they call their X ship ball bearing. Now, this pinion here, it has a little yoke that comes out. You see that there? I wonder if that gets supported in here, in that ball bearing there. Hmm. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Be nice if it did. No, it doesn't. Oh, does it? I don't want to speak too soon. No. Okay. Can't win them all. Well, I would love to have seen that. This is one of those things that I've been doing it for 30 years without it. And here, just to give you an idea, we're a little late on this. I should have done this earlier, but. That's the, I like this. Uh, compared to the Cast King, it seems like it has more travel. I like that. That's personal preference. But it, it, it feels like when you get down to about like this part, you kind of feel like it's kind of loading up. And then, boom. Nice and chunky. Feels great. Thumb, thumb bars by Shimano are really good. I've, I, I haven't really fought, found too many that I don't like. And as I say that, we jump to shark. Uh, this just came out because there's nothing holding it in place. It needs the side plate. Cool. And compared. As much as I like dial with thumb bars, I like to feel this better. I do. And you guys know me. I'm on the dial with VIP form list, that kind of deal. I get all stuff dirt cheap. I don't owe them anything, ever. But, you know. 
it's a nice little bonus when I just want to buy a bunch of Daiwa stuff if they have st stuff that I'm interested in. So I'm not beholden to any brand, whether it's Shimano. I'm, I'm here for you guys in the tackle shops, help you guys, you know, keep them in business. <laughs> but man, this has a better thumb bar feel than the Daiwa. Side by side it does. I kind of like the the knobs on the Daiwa a little bit better. I really do. I don't care that they spin like this either. It doesn't make any difference to me. So yeah, guys, this is this is this is looking good. I, I I like what I see. A lot of times people think that Daiwa, Shimano, high end, they make the good stuff, but they just phone it in for the cheap stuff. Um, and five years ago I would agree with you to be perfectly honest with you they you know they just basically said all right Luz go ahead take over you got us we're not even gonna try and I I, I kind of like what I see here me personally I'm a I'm, I'm a bigger fan of externally adjustable brakes so for me it, it's it, again it's preference you know when i'm out on the water i'm constantly casting when i switch lures i use i often use clips so i can switch a lure in 10 seconds and cast again and oftentimes when i try to carry as few setups as possible i need to adjust that brake on the fly make it as easy as possible if you guys have six setups across your boat tech that really doesn't matter because you have kind of a, 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 a specific setup for a lure now while i have 250 rods and god knows how many reels you know I, I do have specific things for specific setups i still do kind of like that external adjustability but i know you guys out there love those corrados i was a daiwa guy when that corrado was really taken off when the cars were was popular but for that reason you know tdx tds tdz um, that's what I was fishing when the Corrado E's and D's and you know, whatever the green ones were. And I fished them. I like them. But I just like having the ability to adjust on the fly without having to pop the side plate open. But you guys out there that were fishing in Corrados, that's already in your wheelhouse. You don't care about that whatsoever. Now this is going to be where it gets interesting. What do we have down here? Okay, this is a material of unknown something or other it feels like dartanium but it's greased it's not dartanium I don't, I don't think i remember seeing that in the description and the last thing you want to do with dartanium is grease it and you have a felt drag washer for you guys out there that prefer carbon fiber i'm sure it's being that it's a single washer what is it, like six bucks from carbon tax if you want to order one Let me see if I can't get a measurement real quick because sometimes the new reels don't come out right away on wherever you buy your carbon tax washers from. My uber accurate Chinesium calipers. Thirty-five point seven five millimeters is what we'll go with. You can go a tiny bit smaller because derp derp. Okay. Thirty-five point oh three is the measurement. So anything between thirty-five and three quarters and thirty-five and oh three. And the bottom one, you have to be careful. You can't go too big because you don't want the. Uh, the disc to go outside of that the cog 20 23.10 is that on point yeah so 23.10 and whatever that other number was that i already forgot <laughs> and so as we got the calip calipers out let's uh let's do this because we have them out 40.3 that's pretty badass. <laughs> I don't know, is it? You tell me. Okay, so as far as spool volume, something I'll forget the measurements within 30 seconds. 15.97. As you mathematicians that like to calculate 
spool capacity by this number here, 16.16. .16. And it has a little V taper, not quite as V tapered as the old school Abu uh, 6500s and such. But it goes down a little bit. So we'll go with, we'll just go with this here 16.13. Final answer. And then 31 .71. Twenty two point All right, twenty one point five six with cool. Was it a hundred? Yeah, hundred to the outer stud here. I'm the outer stud over here. 105 on the grips. Big grips, big knobs. No, they're a little wider, I think. Yeah, 100, five millimeters from outer knob. So it's a little bit longer, which is cool. A lot of, when it comes to gear ratios and handles. The higher you go up in gear ratio to get some of that torque back, you gotta go longer in the handle. And me personally, I, I it's not a big deal for me for fresh water. I, I don't need 7.3, I don't need 6 point, I, I don't need 8 point whatever. Um, I prefer lower gear ratios. I find I'm a better fisherman since I can kind of speed up easier than it is for me to tell my brain to slow down. So yeah guys, you tell me, actually, let me go one, one thing further, because I think there's four ball bearings in this reel. So we know where one is here. We know there's one in here opposite the handle. That's for the spool. And I'm assuming there's a bearing under here, although I wouldn't care either way if it was a bushing. This location here, a bushing is perfectly fine. Bushing. I actually thought it was going to be a bearing, to be honest. <laughs> so we have bearing, which rides this side of the spool, which is cool. That's fine. Two, three. Um... I, I don't know where the other ball bearing is. I'm probably gonna have to edit this out because it's just three ball bearings and I'm just stupid, but. That's a pretty precise bushing too. These bushings have tighter tolerance tolerances than the Concept Z. It really does look that way. And trust me, guys, I have so much close-up footage of the bushings on those Concept Zs. Yeah, this is much tighter tolerance, which probably is why I'll check it when I get it back together. But um, I don't think there was any handle lean. They've got rock. You kind of like try to go like this with it. There was quite a bit on the Concept Z, or more than the competition, I should say. Um, I am confused now. Let's, let's defer to the box. Three plus one. That makes sense. I thought there were four. So yeah, there's only three. And, uh, yeah, that about sums it up, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together because doing nobody any good in a million pieces at this point since you already got a good look at her. So let me know, guys. What do you guys think? Is this going to be um, something we can expect to see from Shimano moving forward? The, the little bit better value for the money in the lower end? 
I mean, the, the, the cheaper Shimano's, the $99, what is it, the Cassidus and the Sinan, I don't, I don't know what their prices are off the top of my head. They could be $129, I don't know. Uh, they're, you know, a bit plasticky. You know, I guess something that made of plastic is a bit plasticky. But they didn't really impress me all that much. They had a good, a, a, they had a decent feel to them. But with the Fuego CT out there, I just felt it was a better reel. I just liked the way it fished better. I just couldn't believe the free spool on this. That, that's impressive, that free spool on this reel. <laughs> I don't recall this. Or <laughs> Sometimes working on reels, man, you just lose track of what side's what, to be quite honest with you. I always try to just do, you know, or organize the screws however they're facing me when I'm working on it. And that's just something you just got to remember is your system. But when you're trying to speak into a mic and make sure everything's in frame and a lot of times when you start working and moving stuff it's you're looking at the viewfinder very easy reel to get inside by the way very very simple quite possibly the easiest reel ever to get into for basic bait cat or shimano baitcaster wise Give me one second. Kind of like some kind of cruel joke. It's kind of tricky when all this. <laughs> like all this lighting makes it like a hundred degrees in this room. I have my air conditioner going, but the rest of the house um, was cool enough. I just didn't have my tweezers at the ready. I didn't come prepared for class. Yeah, my finger was slipping off. <laughs> I thought I was going to set everything flying. Ugh. Fail. My fingers, my my finger was slipping off the drag star as I was getting ready. Ay. Like I'm actually sweating. It's it's probably ninety seven degrees. Right where I'm at. These LEDs are so bright it looks dim. And that, that went in like it was the easiest thing in the world. So I'm probably gonna fast forward through all that crap. And you're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> that was a ah. My hands are so slippery right now from the oil. Boop. 
blood, sweat, and tears went into putting this. I'm not. I'm not even gonna finish that sentence. <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears went to, into making this real. Nice little reel, ninety nine dollars. It's it's not bad at all. I I was honestly thinking it was going to be a piece of shit. <laughs> I really was. Like my 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 real world expectations were hoping it was going to be like the tried, true, and tested Corrados of yesteryear, the Greenies. But I was like, oh, ninety nine dollars, Shimano, Ugh. and I'm. I, I don't mind it. I like it. I would. I would if 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 I was in a shop. And again, I've never fished this reel. I don't know if this thing is gonna cast like a. I don't know something that doesn't cast well. Um, I, I don't know if it's gonna break after a bass. I, I I wouldn't expect it to. It has a good design. Pinion supported at the X ship bearing. It's butting up against uh, the back side of the the spool bearing here. I guess it it looks. It looks like it's got potential to be a very good reel, which is something I was hoping for but wasn't expecting. And yeah, uh, I dig it. I, I like the, the profile. This, the, I love that everybody's going slim. You know, slim reels are just so much more comfortable. It makes casting one handed, fishing one handed, so much easier. And it's just one of those things where it's about time they're doing it. So you have this guy here, which is is been out for a little while now. It's now really got some serious competition. Thailand versus Malaysia. Fight! <laughs> oh, man. So let me know, guys. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. What do you guys think? I don't. I just through experience, I know this is gonna be a good one. And I got quality control. All things aside, you get a dud in the mail. Yeah, it sucks, but you know, overall, these are really nice reels. And for the gentleman in the comment section that mentioned just the other day that he had issues with his uh, handle uh, coming backwards, let's take a look here. That 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 kind of rock backwards is just the handle on the the nut, and if you look, no no back play to speak of, and we'll we'll tighten up the drag a little bit. See, only when I reel against the drag, it has that slow but heavy handle back play, and if we go like this. See how it kind of plays with the light drag? That, that's common on, on a lot of reels. Let's see if it does it here. Let me tighten this up at least. I think this, yeah, I think I just saw it do it too. See, yeah, that's, that's to be expected. What basically, what that is, the handle shaft that runs from Underneath this nut all the way down to the base of the frame, which on this reel is a bushing, basically has to have a little bit of room in that anti reverse clutch sleeve. And that's what that is. That's why when you tighten down the drag, that's why it kind of goes away. Because that drag kind of sticks everything together more. And it just basically turns based on how much resistance there is between the clutch sleeve and everything else up here with the the handle retaining nut or the drag star nut so yeah all right so with all that being said you know let me know down below what you guys think i i, I think it's a good looking reel i like the profile i like the elongated level wind away from the spool i do like the knobs i like the tolerances of the knobs too i mean this for 
$100, even with this one having a little tiny bit of play, is better than reels that are twice as expensive, $250. I, I, I dig it, guys. The plastic, which I assume is plastic drag star, might be CI4, I don't know, it's nice. It's almost like the same thing you have on the Aldebaran BFS or a Metanium or something along those lines. Uh, only it's a plastic, but it's not that crappy plastic. There's no, there's no give to it. It's not like that Cast King plastic. It really isn't. And it's, it looks and feels better. I, I, and I don't give two shits about a drag star, but when you notice the feel and how it goes around that compression nut for the drag stack, versus having some brass piece in the middle that is relied on screwing down a tiny, it's, it's a better design. It's just hands down is. So it's, uh, I hope this reel is going to do well. I think it will. Looks nice from, from here. That's a nice look. It almost looks almost like a Bantam. I think the Bantam MGL is a beautiful looking reel. Looks, I, I like what they're doing with the more grrr <laughs> look. Yeah, the Tranks 200, 300, 400. And you have the Bantam MGL. You have this now that has that kind of similar look. I dig it. Let's go catch some fish on it. 